You may have heard about the recovery to practice model in mental health and may, may be familiar with the word diversity. But have you thought about how diversity and inclusion relate to recovery? We're all humans and we all work with humans. The intriguing thing is how incredibly unique and diverse we are. In this video, we discuss diversity and inclusion in recovery, intersectionality, biases, and some advantages of incorporating diversity into our practice. Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Hofer from the University of Texas at Arlington's School of Social Work. With gratitude for the support of the Hogg Foundation for Mental Health, I'm presenting information to help you learn more about the concepts of the recovery treatment movement. The purpose of this training is to advance the goal of the Hogg Foundation Recovery to Practice Grant Program. We seek to enhance the implementation of recovery-oriented practice among social workers and other behavioral health practitioners through participation in comprehensive, discipline-specific training. This video is helpful to anyone interested in learning about improving mental health services through the recovery approach, whether you're still a student or an experienced practitioner. Diversity is a vital topic for social workers and other mental health practitioners. This presentation will help you explore diversity and the Recovery to Practice movement. The Recovery to Practice initiative is an evidence-based approach to mental health and substance abuse recovery, which is supported by SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. SAMHSA suggests using an approach that includes a cultural perspective. To be more specific, recovery treatment needs to be culturally grounded, attuned, and sensitive to the client's environment. Personalization of treatment is beneficial in meeting everyone's unique needs. To become culturally attuned, the first step is to explore the topic of diversity. Diversity can be explained as the unique combination of a person's background, experience, and ideas. This complex and layered background determines the way people interact with the world, how they see themselves, and often how they view mental health or recovery treatment. Diversity is also any traits you may use to describe someone. For example, my friend is a biracial, 28-year-old married Catholic male born and raised in Puerto Rico who moved to Dallas to attend college. Most people have numerous characteristics that make up their unique self. These may be visible, invisible, or even just self-defined. Socioeconomic class, spirituality, political affiliation, or sexual orientation are also aspects that may be considered part of a person's diversity. Other aspects may be an individual's level of ability in different situations, their gender identity, their marital status, or even their own career path. A person may also define themselves by their immigration status, tribal affiliation, or the school they attend. As you can see, there are many, many aspects of diversity. Diversity is a fascinating blend of characteristics bound up in one person, in a team or a community. These overlap and intertwine in a process called intersectionality. For example, I'm a white male, raised in the suburbs during the 1960s, a perfect boomer stereotype. I have a good income and lots of education. I'm a father and orphan, a brother and a whole lot else. The things that make me me can't just fit into one or two words. Your clients and you are the same way. Part of your job is to understand the people you work with in many different ways. To improve understanding about cultural identity, let's examine a subject that you are an expert in, yourself. Please take just a few moments to really consider the following questions. You can even write your answers down in a journal or discuss within a group. First, what words would you use to identify yourself? How do you think someone else would describe you? 
When and how did you become aware of your racial and other identities? How do you benefit from, or how are you hindered by, different pieces of your identity? Hmm. Are some of these questions easier or more difficult to answer than others? Why might that be? Thinking about these questions helps you understand yourself and your cultural identity. Reflecting on your own identity and what you do or don't know about other cultural groups can improve your skill set. Along with gaining an understanding of yourself, you may also become aware of some differences between yourself and others. It's actually quite a normal thing for people to identify similarities and differences between themselves and other individuals that we all encounter every day. This, in and of itself, is not a good or bad thing. It's just is what happens. However, the enemies of embracing diversity are stereotyping, bias, prejudice, discrimination, and oppression. Self-evaluation is recommended to become the best practitioner you can be. And one way to accomplish this is to assess your own biases. Intentional or unintentional bias can be a barrier to providing effective recovery treatment. It also makes it difficult to incorporate culture into treatment. Therefore, it's important to be aware of bias or stereotypes as they may lead to prejudice and oppression. Many of us, and certainly many of our clients, have been victims of stereotypes and experienced the negative side of bias. The model we show here indicates how stereotypes perpetuate oppression. As practitioners, we must be aware of and understand how these might impact our clients. Stereotyping, personal bias, prejudice, discrimination, and oppression are all counterproductive to incorporating diversity and inclusion in practice. In the United States, Caucasians, or, or white, are approximately 62% of the population, but dominate mental health services. According to a report from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to Congress, racial and ethnic minorities make up only 5% of psychologists, 10% of counselors, and 18% of psychiatrists and social workers. These small percentages demonstrate the lack of minority representation in the provision of mental health services. Diversity is a consideration as many of our clients come from minority background. Becoming aware of the diverse client base that we work with is important. If social workers are aware of their own personal biases and incorporate diversity principles, it becomes easier to build trust and rapport with the clients. This, in turn, of course, helps with the professional relationship required for recovery treatment. The National Consortium for Multicultural Education for Health Professionals state, beliefs by themselves are not discriminatory. However, when those beliefs affect the quantity or quality of care or result in providing different treatment to clients, they become discriminatory. Discrimination is a violation of the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and it certainly counters to all the ethical principles of social workers. We have now discussed the importance of including diversity and inclusion principles into treatment. The next question is, how on earth do we do that? Becoming culturally sensitive and aware of the need for diversity and inclusion is an ongoing process. It takes self-inventory and ongoing effort to implement change. To begin with, we need to become aware of our own personal biases. To encourage more diversity and inclusion, we need to be intentional about seeking conversations with people who are different from ourselves and are able to in help us understand different viewpoints. An important adage that we should follow is, when you know better, you do better. This is applicable to embracing other people's and all their differences. As a mental health practitioner, this is vital. 
One important step in encouraging diversity and inclusion is to address comments that friends, family, or co-workers might make that are biased, prejudiced, or discriminatory. To do our work well, we must ensure that everyone feels the importance of celebrating diversity and inclusion for all. This concludes the Introduction to Diversity video. We hope you've learned about how important this topic is in the recovery field. The next video in this series is Gender Plus, which dives into gender, sex, sexuality, and terminology of the LGBTQ movement. Before the next video, think about what you already know about gender and what things are still in question for you in applying these concepts to recovery practice.